Hi, I'm Miley Oye. I'd like to share some of the ways I use search queries information from Google Webmaster Tools to improve my site. To give some background, the first step of the search engine pipeline is crawling, then indexing, and last is search results, which includes ranking and the display of results to users. Search queries data sheds light on this third step in the search engine pipeline. If a user clicks and comes to your site, that's where traditional Google Analytics comes in. Search queries, however, also displays impression data, meaning you'll also have information about searchers when they see your site, but might not click through. A couple of years ago, Webmaster Tools data was integrated as SEO reports in Google Analytics. Often, we see people who want to bring more visitors to their site over-focus their attention on search queries and ranking when there are even bigger gains in search friendliness if they investigated how their site is crawled or if they reduced duplicates so that their site was more optimally indexed. Additionally, while search queries feature provides lots of actionable information, the ranking of your pages in search results is only one part of the process to the ultimate goal of having users convert on your site, whether conversion is buying a product or becoming a subscriber you still need to provide a great result and a good user experience on your site. With this covered, let's take a look at search queries in Webmaster Tools. Search queries is tabbed with top searches and top pages. There's also a filter button, the ability to set a date range going back several months, download information, or even to see the change rate during the prior but equal time interval. Some of the words on this page might be new to you, so let's review definitions. Query is a user's search term or terms. This is the query for Google Webmaster Tools. Impressions means that when a user performed a query, a page from your site could be visible in their search results. For example, if a searcher queried Google Blog for site owners, if our site, googlewebmastercentral.blogspot.com, was ranked number five, and one through 10 of the search results were shown to the user, then this would count as an impression. However, if my page ranked number 11 and only one through 10 of the results were displayed to the user, this would not count as impression for the query unless the user clicked to see the next page of results, 11 through 20. The next term is average position. To calculate average position, we take into account the top ranking URL from your site for a particular query, but often across different users. In the example of the query Google Blog for Site Owners, we'd use the position of number five for the Webmaster Central blog and disregard the later positions for the query for this search. If another user made the same query, but our top result was in the number three position, the average top position would be four, since it's the average of five and three. Click means that the user selected the result. They must have found the display enticing. CTR stands for click-through rate. It's the percentage that the site's page was selected in results. This provides some insight to how well the results display match the query and the user's intent. One other term that's good to know, although it's not mentioned in this feature, is qualified query or even qualified traffic. Qualified means that if a user arrives at your site or sees your site in search results, there's a realistic chance that they would like your content and convert. It's more efficient to focus on your site receiving qualified traffic rather than trying to rank for terms where users will be unsatisfied with the result. For example, while the Google Webmaster Central blog has impressions for the standalone query Google, that query won't bring us qualified traffic. Those searchers likely want the Google homepage. Therefore, we can de-emphasize unqualified queries like Google during our site's improvements. Now, let's get into an approach that I use when investigating the search queries feature. Before I even look at a business's search queries data, I start by asking the questions to understand the audience. Some questions to keep in mind as you improve your site are, what are the goals of your website and your business? What groups are you targeting? Where are they located? What devices are they using? What are their objectives? Can or do their objectives align with your company's business goals? Do their query terms match your content? On the search queries page, the default filter is set to web. When it comes to better understanding the audience who sees your site in search results, select filter 
and you'll notice the breakdown of the searchers given their countries and search types, like web and image search. If your visitors often come from several countries, you can begin evaluating whether your site properly meets their needs and if it's worth investing more time to do so. For example, given that much of the audience comes from Canada in addition to the United States, if we were a business looking to develop, we could try writing content tailored to issues in Canada. As you investigate individual queries, it's often helpful to use an incognito window or a browser without stored cookies or where you're not logged into Google so that personalization doesn't affect your results. Going back to the main search queries page, one of the first things I do is sort by clicks rather than by the default sorting of impressions. This is because impressions, while extremely valuable, can initially blur the real picture of my site since they can refer to both qualified and unqualified queries. Once queries are sorted by clicks, for this date range, you'll have on display the Google searches that bring your site the most traffic. Just to repeat, once you've sorted by clicks, these are the actual Google queries that bring your site the most traffic. I often start here because after knowing what audiences I want to attract, it's good to know what I'm already doing well before I start making changes. Be aware that changing the date range can change the results, so you may want to look at also a three-month time range, and then even keep track of your queries over time by downloading the data. Webmaster Tools provides up to three months of history. Often businesses want to see yearly trends for searcher behavior that changes with the holiday shopping season, Valentine's Day, or back to school. To see yearly trends requires downloading the information. Questions to ask yourself as you investigate are, are these the queries I would expect? Does it seem like these clicks would bring qualified traffic? Can the display of my page and search results be better optimized for this query? As you investigate the queries that bring your site the most traffic, simulate the entire searcher experience from their possible location and motivation to performing the query, to viewing the search results display, to clicking on your site, and then the user experience. More advanced analytics users can also tie in their knowledge here. If you click the query, you'll see the pages that appear in results for the query. Hovering on the arrow provides a preview of the page. If there are different URLs with duplicate content, improve your site by consolidating the information, perhaps with a 301 redirect or rel canonical. If there are pages that you wouldn't expect to rank for the query, check how many clicks they have. If you feel it's significant, then check out the page. Take notes, because after reviewing more of your queries and more result pages, you'll need to determine which pages and for which user experiences you'd like to prioritize improvements. If, when you sorted by clicks, you were surprised that certain queries were missing from the list, you might begin investigating why. How does your site rank and appear for the query? Is the search results display compelling? How do your competitors look? Information about improving the title and snippet display in search results can be found here. After we've investigated by sorting by clicks, let's now sort by CTR, click-through rate. High CTR means that your page probably has a good search result display for the query. Low CTR for a relevant or qualified query likely means that you'll want to improve your search results display. Take note of which queries aren't performing as expected. And as before, investigate how your site appears in search results for the query. Is the title and snippet compelling to click on? Does it show a unique value add to the searcher? With an understanding of impressions, clicks, and CTR, you'll likely want to start organizing your queries into categories that will simplify tracking them and making improvements. For example, for the Webmaster Central blog, I might want to break down our queries into branded terms that we definitely should rank for. These are often navigational queries of users looking for our site. Now I'll check my CTR for these queries to make sure users are able to reach my site. Another category of queries that might be useful are those strongly correlated with conversion. If the goal of our Webmaster Central blog was to provide readers the latest in Google news for site owners, we might start categorizing queries that match this goal, like Google SEO Tips 2012 and Google SEO Secrets 2012. I might also notice that searchers use technical terms to find our site. So I might have another category on how our site performs for technical instruction. For each of these categories, 
I'll make sure to understand the user's mindset as they perform the query, where they're located, and even whether their device might change their behavior. Then, whether my page's search result display is compelling. Furthermore, if they click on my site, does the content match their expectations, and are we providing a great user experience? Back at the main Search Queries page, let's now check out the Top Pages tab. If you sort your top pages by clicks, you can see that for a given date range, these are the pages most visited by searchers. Whereas before we saw the queries that brought our site the most traffic, now we're seeing the pages most visited by searchers. It's probably pretty obvious that you'll want to investigate these pages to make sure that they're clear, well-written, and provide an easy way for a visitor to further navigate your site, buy your product, or otherwise convert. You can gain a better sense of what users are doing on these pages through Google Analytics. Next, you can sort top pages by impressions. Because these pages are often shown to users in search results, it's likely that Google considers them relevant pages. Given that these top pages are valuable from a search engine perspective, you can use them to link to your high quality but lower ranking or less featured pages for more visibility for users and search engines. To optimize top pages, first, accept that top pages for your users in Google might not be what you originally imagined. Second, check that all top pages are user-friendly and perhaps even conversion-friendly. Third, consider utilizing your top pages to internally link to your high quality but lower ranking pages. Search queries and ranking are an important step in bringing qualified visitors to your site and meeting your business goals. But remember, they're not the only step. For example, better marketing can lead to more searchers looking for your product or service. Good content can upsell to your visitors. And then providing a great user experience can bring direct referrals and repeat customers. Our team hopes you can make use of the search queries feature to improve your site. Thanks for your time.